Hi and welcome to my tutorial about equalization using the wave capture software. I will show you an efficient way to, to create uh, parametric filters with a sequence uh, and I will promise you that it will be much quicker than so-called silent tuning. We start with a measurement made of log sine sweep and it's uh, we are using a uh, multi-time windowing here to uh, extract the direct sound we go to the target we don't want to have it flat we want to have it uh, for for example a uh, out door rock festival we choose the uh, pass band like this. So we calculate the uh, average level in the passband. We go to the optimizer. We have chosen a uh, lake uh, controller uh, or lake type of rate cosine filter. Uh, it provides 27 filters as maximum. And we start the optimizer. And we see the count here. And here we have <coughs> the list of raised cosine filter, like this. And then we go to the export section and save this in the lake controller folder for uh, EQ overlays. If you want to hear about more details, please hang on. This is a, a trace coming from an average of seven different uh, measurement positions. That is for uh, minimize the influence of reflection from the room. Uh, on the bottom here, you can see the Kepstrom representation of the time domain. Uh, so this is made in a single uh, log sign sweep place uh, seven microphones in an eight channel uh, sound card and just one sweep like this and all seven uh, curves are uh, captured in in one sweep. Uh, we can look at the, the face, the wrap face doesn't say so much here. We can see uh, the group delay and this is the remains from this peak synopsis is the remains from from uh, their, their, their room reverberation and reflections. Uh, we can apply uh, a multi time window so we can uh, wash out uh, the room further. Uh, let's go to the to the target. Uh, while creating parametric filters uh, it's important to choose a reference level uh, so uh, the optimizer know where the the average level is. Uh, as you can see, you can drag this, and uh, in this case, it will produce a lot of uh, peak gain and uh, here a lot of uh, notch gain parametric filters. But one way to figure out or calculate the average le level is to use these cursors, and you got an uh, RMS average level here. So just try to make uh, this uh, uh, measurement uh, flat, the system flat, just to show how the optimizer works. So we take a generic and uh, then we uh, have a minimum bandwidth here and uh, so you can steer uh, how much 
bandwidth uh, you allow for, for the peaking and for the notching uh, parametric filters. And these are also control if these filter doesn't uh, make it. Uh, now you see you have a quite uh, big range for the filter here, but if you limit it, it, it will uh, need, need to, to place maybe several filters in the, at the same frequency. Before we start the uh, optimizer, we have to define uh, in which frequency range we will we'll put all these 32 uh, parametric filters. So we take these cursors and define <coughs> the frequency range. We can also type it in here in numbers. Uh, and then we try the optimizer. And it become quite flat and here we can see the list of all the parameters and we can look at the filter itself it's quite a lot of high Q and that will not sound so good I think so we can go back and uh, then we re reduce the, the uh, or increase the, the bandwidth of uh, uh, <coughs> the peaking filters and run up the optimizer again okay a little bit better and this is the total result you can look at the group delay here and some peaks are remaining here due to reflections and so on measurement and then we can go through all the filters here and we can edit them we can take away this filter for example Here is another one, we can remove it. Or we can go back to the uh, parameters here and say that not allow so high peaks. Now we see that there are only notching parametric filters left. Usually you don't want to have a flat response of your system. It's only for studio monitoring, etc. Uh, you want to have something uh, uh, like uh, a bump in, in the base and maybe a, a, a shelving filter on the high. And there are several such targets uh, included in, in the software. So you can choose these text files. They are qu quite simple. Uh, for example, uh, um, a shelving. It's uh, just to Tell, tilt. Uh, it's just to, to, to define a frequency and a, and a dB level in the text file. Uh, or you can create your your own uh, by make a shelving filter, no shelving filter like like this, and make a Butterbolt filter, for example, like this, and then you adjust the the average level 
according to this. Uh, and then you go to the optimizer and then all the filters for this target curve is calculated. Again, we avoid uh, high Q uh, peaking filters. So here we can see the, the result. Then uh, you can export this in several formats, XML or if there are, uh, we have different hardware device which is uh, available for uh, the software so you can choose a, a, a lake for example and then you got the settings for this with with uh, 27 uh, parametric uh, filter or type race cosine filters Okay, this is the total filter. And then you can export this as a, an overlay to the lake processor. In many cases, your <coughs> hardware doesn't allow for thousands of parametric filters. Usually there are only 12 in your DSP in the amplifier, for example, and you want to use its use these filters as efficient as possible so one way is to steer those filters in an efficient way let's say that we want to uh, focus most of the filters in the vocal range so we place six filters there start the optimizer and then we have six left so we place three of them in the sub and then we continue the optimizer like this. And then we place the remaining three parametric filter in the high frequency region. Like this and continue optimizer. And here are, do we have the, the result of the 12 available parametric filters.